Terry from Jimmy Bean's Wool and today I'm going to show you some techniques for making a beekeeper's quilt. And you may be wondering what a beekeeper's quilt is. Well, it is this wonderful little knitted quilt that um, Tiny Owls Knits has designed and it mimics the hexagonal quilt square blocks that you see in some of the old time simple quilts. And these are knit in little tiny he um, honeycomb that are about three inches across. And these honeycombs have been affectionately termed hexi puffs by all of those who are making them. So I'm going to show you a few different ways of casting on, um, different types of needles that you can use, and some increases that you can use to make your hexi puffs. So these are really a fun little thing. They're just, you, they're done both sides at the same time and you start off with a cast on very similar to a cast on you would use for a toe up sock. You can see this one I started here and I'm about two thirds of the way through it. So let me show you to start with the cast on that she describes in the pattern. It's out of the way here and I'm just going to cast on um, 10 stitches here so that we're not knitting forever here. So I'm just using a regular standard long tail cast on. I don't use a knot when I do my cast on. Some people like to do a slip knot. Either way is fine. There's 10. And so now we have 10 stitches and we're going to divide them up onto two other double points. So with my tail and my working yarn on the right, I'm going to take two sets of double points and hold them next to each other. And then I'm purlwise, I'm going to slip alternate stitches from one needle to the other so that they are evenly divided among, uh, among my two other double points here. So there, now I have the stitches evenly divided onto my other two needles. And what did I do? Why do I have? Hmm, well, that didn't work right, but we're just going to, oh, I see what happened. I lost one off the other side. Okay, well, we're just going to pretend I did it right. So there we go. So now we have five on each needle. And you'll notice your working yarn is at this end, so we're going to slide them to the other end. Make sure your working yarn is coming from the needle in the back, so we're going to turn them over. And we're just going to knit. And I'm all thumbs today, so I'm being clumsy. Up, so I'm just going to kind of twist that there. So now we're going to the other needle. Because I messed up this one stitch, I'm going to just kind of add a twist to it here to get it. So that's not how you're supposed to do it. And there's the start of it, and it makes a very nice little start like this one here. This one's much better without having dropped any stitches off the needles as we're doing it. So another way that you can do it, <coughs> you don't, if you hate double points, and I know a lot of you do, you can use Magic Loop. 
We want to use a 36 or a 40 inch magic loop for this project. A 36 would be adequate. A 24 probably will not give you enough cable to pull it around to work. So there's two ways you could do cast-ons, or actually there's more than two, but if you want to cast on the way she describes, cast on to a double point. And in this case, I'm going to use two double points so I can get it onto my larger circular needle I'm working with today. So there's 10 stitches there. We have the extra needle. Now, instead of turning it around this way like I did with the double points, this time I'm going to slip them from the opposite end onto the alternate tips of my circular needle. Yeah, so that's how it should look when I don't make mistakes on that. So, and then you're going to do the same thing. You want your working yarn coming from the yarn needle in the back. So, I'll do this one. English for those of you who knit English. So here I've got my home position. With I'm going to pull my needle around from in back. position and turn. And knit the other side. Now, well, I'll get to that in a minute. Gonna jump ahead of myself here. go and there is a cast on. Now this is a lot looser because I'm using a larger needle and larger yarn but there's your cast on for that side. Now alternatively you could do a figure eight cast on and that would be a very nice cast on for this too and give you just a little different look. The figure eight cast on you're going to hold your needle tips parallel to each other just a little space Give yourself a tail, you know, bring it so that the tail is hanging down. I don't know if you can see that right between the needles and over the top. Then with the same hand as holding your needle, you want to grasp that tail so it doesn't go anywhere. And then just start winding in a figure eight around both needles. And snug it up so it's not too loose, but not super duper tight either. Just want to take up the slack. Same with any cast on. Don't cast on too tightly. We're going to do that until there are five stitches on each needle, or five wraps. Then we're going to turn, and we want to make sure we hold on because this is not a very secure cast on until we knit our first row. So again, we're wanting it to come from the needle in the back. Take our front, our needle and that's only a little bit tricky on the very first round. This is my favorite provisional cast on because you really can knit in either direction without very that. 
you can knit going from both directions without having to worry about picking out a crocheted cast on or any of that. But this one works very nicely for this. It just you have to be a little bit more coordinated holding onto your yarns for the first round. So there is one side. yarn here. There's that one. And there. And this one gives you the same look as if you had closed up the bottom with a Kitchener stitch. It'll look just like a knit stitch. So that's that one. Now, it's also possible to knit these hexapuffs on two circulars, just like you would do toe-up socks. So here, I have my two circulars, and just like socks, I like to use a shorter one and a longer one. Um, that way you always know what end of your needle you're going to be grabbing. yarn here and this time I'm also going to do a figure eight cast on just because it's quick and easy here. Just always remembering to go back in between your needles each time. A little slipperier with the metal needles. And you could also do a Judy's Magic cast on, which is very similar to this, but it has a little anchoring twist between the two. And Jeannie has already done an excellent video on how to do Judy's Magic cast on, and it's on our website. Now, with our circ two circulars, this is going to be a little different. So we're going to turn these, and instead of pulling any needle through, we're just going to take the back needle where our yarn is wrapped around last and bring it so that those stitches are on the cable. Then we're going to grab the other end of the front needle and then we're just going to knit those without splitting the stitches. This yarn is a little splitty. It's been kicked around a little bit. And you still want to make sure you hold on to your tail so you're not losing any wraps off that other needle while you're doing this. Okay, so there we've switched that. Now we're going to turn. Still holding on to our tail and everything. We're going to bring those other wraps up onto the tip of our other needle. And with the tail end of our other needle, we're just going to start knitting. sure you bring that other needle. Now it makes it a lot easier paying attention. It's hard to pay attention to everything when we're doing these videos. And there you have the magic or the figure eight cast on on that. So a lot of people are wondering and having a little trouble with loose stitches while they're doing their increases. Now, she just has you doing a knit front and back and in the first stitch and the second to the last stitch on every on each side, which is a very simple um, increase. And it does make a little bit looser. On this side, you can see the stitches look kind of nice. And on this side, 
they're, let's get this circular out of the way, they're ever so slightly loose, but you're going to be sewing all of these edge to edge, and so you're not going to see those. And if you, even if this was a sock, once you blocked it, all those stitches would tighten up. So don't get overly obsessed about um, loose stitches. But one thing that you can do to avoid the loose stitches and the loose ladders is when you go to, um, I'm doing decreases here, when you go to switch sides after you, you do this very first stitch, and you slide everything off the needles, and then I always just snug that right up so that this needle is snug up against the back needle. And that helps eliminate ladders between the two needles, the loose stitches. And then we can just go over the other side and I'll show you that again. decreases this part you just knit two together so that's how that works and then I would just repeat on the other side as well so what I'm going to show you here is let's do some of those increases go back over here and remembering that this has that funny little loose stitch so it won't look as good as that first one there And you notice I often switch back and forth between Continental and English. I can knit both ways. And so to knit front and back, you go into the first stitch and knit as usual, but don't slide it off the needle. Then you're going to go into the back of that same stitch, make a knit stitch again, and now I have two stitches over here on the left and one over here. Now I'm going to slip that one off the needle. And then I'm going to work the next stitch. And you notice I'm not trying to hold on to both needles. I'm letting this other back needle flop around a little bit. Don't want it to get all twisted. But trying to hold both and control both is just going to make it harder for you to work. So don't get freaky about trying to hold on to it. So here we're going to do knit in front and back again. Knit in the front of the loop. And go back down in here. In the back, knit again, and then drop the stitch off the needle, and then we're going to knit the last stitch. And that looks, that's that funny looking stitch because I got it a little loose. So we've just increased two stitches, so now we have seven stitches on that needle. I'm going to turn. stitches close to my tip. Oops, and we're going to knit front and back. So now we have two stitches. Three, four, and we're going to five and six, stuff knit front and back, and seven. And that's all there is to it. So those are the increase. Now, some people prefer a different kind of increase. And let me just quickly knit around here so that there's some space between the increases. So you could do a make one, and make ones can go right or left, 
and I usually find make one less a little simpler to do. So for doing this we're going to go ahead and knit one stitch. Like I said, I give an extra snug, snug that needle right up again so that they're forming a cross. And then we're, for make one, you go in, you see this little ladder right here between the two stitches? Right there. Let's see how it is so small. You're going to take your tip of your left needle and you're going to pick that up and going to knit into the back of that loop that you've now done. And sometimes it helps to kind of go around from the front and roll it over. There you go. And then knit across. And then do the same thing between the last two stitches. Pick up the ladder and go right back there and I'm kind of rolling it around over the top to get that needle in there. And there we go. So that one is a make one and technically that's a make one left. When you pick it up from front to back it's a make one left. When you pick it up back to front it's a make one right. So those are a different kind of increase that you could do and you might prefer the way those look better. So experiment and see. Um, let's see if there's anything else. So I think that's pretty much covers it. If you have any other questions, you just let us know and we will do our best to maybe film another video that helps address the question. So thanks for watching and this is Terry from Jimmy Beans Wool. Thunder rumbles on this American summer night.